95. Between local lines, notes from the Emirate. One of the most spectacular aspects about Sharjah is that it's such a cultural hotspot and it's definitely known for its museums, for its art exhibitions, for its many cultural activities. And just over the past year or so, the cultural capital definitely has invested in building several unique uh, tourist destinations or spots. And that is to attract visitors from its neighbors and all around the world, really. One attraction that we're so excited to be discussing and talking about, and it's actually set to open its doors this year, in fact, during Eid al-Adha is al suhub Rest House. Now, what do we know about uh, al suhub Rest House? It actually sits 580 meters uh, above sea level. And um, it's like a flying saucer-shaped building. It offers views of Khorfakan below. All of Khorfakan mm. you can see from up above. And uh, there are water fountains and a restaurant at the new building, uh, which can be reached by hiking or by a car, thanks to a new stretch of road, of course. And a further two rest houses are also in the pipeline, and it will be opening at 253 meters and 480 meters above sea level. That's right. And uh, it's about 30-minute drive from Khorfakan city and about a 90-minute drive from central Sharjah and apart from providing spectacular beautiful views of Khorfakan this project is going to include water fountains beaches a restaurant parking spaces and other service amenities as well so uh, after driving this distance towards the attraction visitors are going to find rest houses uh, that are way high up uh, that offer sweeping views and amenities as well and uh, we're expected to see a lot in the, down the pipeline as well. His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasmi, Supreme Council Member and Ruler of Sharjah, has directed officials to develop the roadsides with agricultural landscaping to provide more amenities and views for tourists as well. The yeah, Sohob Guest House uh, was a project promised by His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasmi, Supreme Council Member and Ruler of Sharjah, who visited the location also uh, way back in October 2020 and made the announcement on the Khat al Mabashar program of uh, Sharjah TV and radio. And now this has come to reality. This new project is about 500 meters above sea level. A perfect pit stop as well, should you be hiking or even driving up that area. So about a five kilometer road is, has been built to lead you on top of that little cliff. And uh, this is the new destination of Khorfakan. If you were to look at Khorfakan in terms of what's out there as well, uh, a couple of new projects have been launched. Of course, we saw the amphitheater, we yes. saw the waterfall, and uh, we've in fact seen there are plans of having a restaurant built within the waterfall. Yes, uh, and we actually got a sneak peek of it. Exactly. When we went to see the film, Khorfakan. True. Yeah, and it was amazing. So much to look forward to. We've also got the Khorfakan Beach, which has been set up. Gets very busy during the public holidays, by the way. Lots of food items there now. We've got more restaurants opening up. Lots of coffee shops as well. Uh, and uh, it's just such a, uh, an exciting destination. And uh, there is a reason why we call it, or I personally call it, my self-proclaimed hometown. Mm -hmm. just, just because of the exceptional mm -hmm. views and things uh, that are there. And, uh, you know, people here in Sharjah and even uh, His Highness uh, Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasmi also said, Labayki Khorfakhan, you know, so there's a reason. <laughs> Why it is, and it's such so much a, history behind it. A lot of history, yeah, to be and honest. it contributes to Sharjah's history in particular. Yeah. Yes, yes, and it's it's a it's a nice, very calming, relaxing beach town. That's how I look at it. Uh, great food, uh, great uh, amenities, uh, a, a place to go snorkeling or. Uh, doing various water sports as well. It's just a nice, cozy coastal town. It's a place you go to for comfort. That's how I see it, uh, for me at least. Look, if there's going to be a lot of people who might have been aware of the Khorfakan Road and how busy it gets, like there's queues forming on the motorway. It, it, it's true, sadly, this, well, luckily slash sadly as well. But you've got to be very tactical because there's so much to do in Khorfakan. Mm -hmm. I would advise is let go of the mindset of saying, oh man, it might be too hot or not. Leave early. Right. Mm -hmm. Start off with a nice little walk around Sheese Park. 
It's on the motorway. Oh, okay. Spectacular, I love it. Yeah, and then uh, after that drive over. Face Adam. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Rafisa Dam on the way back. On I the way recommend. back. I would yeah. recommend on the way back because yeah. of the big U-turn you have and to take. And they have a good restaurant there as well. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's overlooking the dam. True. So it's amazing views as well with amazing food. And it's outdoor. They're, they have an outdoor mm. one. Yeah. You can hike around the area as well. Exactly. So I would recommend start early. She Spark is done. Then you go down towards the Khorfakan Beach. Have a beach, nice lunch yeah. slash uh, coffee over there. Check out the Heritage Souk area because you'll find the big fi famous mosque from the Five Durham Note. Um, and then you can go off to... Uh, check out uh, newer destinations within Khorfa Khan. They have a al Rabi hiking uh, trail as well. Maybe a bit too hot to do that. It is I, too I, hot, I, I but for that. people who are adventurers and they, they like to do that, why Early not? morning. Yeah. Do it early morning. Oh, my days. That's such an exceptional Our beer. own Iman Majali would do it, I'm sure. She totally <laughs> would, yeah. I think she might have done it already as well. Yeah. So. Like in such a weather condition, yeah, she would do it. Why not? You'll lose why a lot not? of uh, water weight. <laughs> body weight for sure guys there's so much to do so um, much to do and after you've done the waterfall or the, the waterfall and the amphitheater taking those pictures do drive back towards the Harafisa Dam and then drive back on that motorway then you're done you're not, you're not stuck in the big traffic because usually the big traffic is expected around 3pm 2 to 3pm is when you can expect to see a lot more people on those roads so be mindful of that. Yeah, it's great for sea activities. I mm. think, uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of hot right now, but when if when the weather permits, I mean, this is the place to go. Uh, you could go sailing. Uh, you, you have people teaching you how to do deep sea fishing. If you're, you're not into all those activities, there's great seafood there as well. Uh, restaurants, water sports, uh, camping. It's just a great, great place to go to. And the parasailing, parasailing too. Yeah, yeah that's big. Though, that's big over there as well. So. Always yeah. nice to explore that for sure. But uh, stay with us on the Morning Merch List. Up next, we talk to you about the uh, the Sharjah Tourism's uh, summer campaign, mm -hmm. summer 2021. And we'll quickly move on to that and we'll become the Morning Merch List uh, travel guide and travel diaries for you in terms of what you can do in the Emirate of Sharjah. Stay with us. And if you'd like to contribute towards the MM or the Majlis Diaries, text us on 4215 and uh, we'll continue the discussions uh, from there. We'll let you enjoy some musical entertainment for the time being and then we shall be back. You're listening to The Morning Majlis only on Pulse 95. This is Pulse 95. Pulse 95. It's The Morning Majlis. It's The Morning Majlis. Bit of a colourful theme for the world of... Uh, uh, tourism here in the Emirate of uh, Sharjah. We are seeing uh, the the launch of uh, the famous uh, um, uh, the, uh, Sohab guest house that's going to be taking place. And I can see some early pictures emerging from that part of the country. So very picturesque. It is very picturesque. It's very foggy at the moment uh, from what <laughs> I can see. And it, it literally feels like you are in the clouds. So that's uh, uh, what's happening at the moment. 580 80 meters above sea level. That's a half a kilometer, guys. That's a lot. And wow. uh, uh, so that's the new destination that's popping up. Um, Sharjah Commerce Tourism Development Authority has now got involved and said, let's celebrate summer 2021 in the Emirate of Sharjah. A stark contrast to that big video they shared last year saying we will see you here again we miss you already <laughs> and they showed the empty areas of Al-Qasba and quiet areas of Al-Majaz when everything will was obviously due to the lockdown and due to the um, uh, COVID-19 restrictions that they were closed and now up and coming and thriving yeah, they did announce this new campaign or the Sharjah Summer Campaign, it's called. It's running from today until August 31st and it's part of the authority's uh, commitment to introduce quality projects and develop um, integrated tourism experiences that fulfill the needs of all Sharjah tourists and visitors as well. And it aims to raise awareness of the Emirates' most important tourist attractions, initiatives, destinations, uh, new hotel amenities, as well as stimulating uh, internal um, tourism and also boost confidence in Sharjah as a safe and preferred family vacation destination. So during the summer campaign days, uh, the authority is actually hosting a competition for Instagram followers on its account 
Visit SHJ. That's Visit Charger. So you can go on their account, Visit SHJ, as well as promotional tourism coverage they're doing in collaboration with a number of social media uh, celebrities as well. And they did say that we are delighted to see the return of the Sharjah Summer Campaign, which is the most prominent um, uh, tourist event of its kind here in the Emirate of Sharjah. As it includes many interesting tourism and entertainment activities, and it provides a wide range of offers. Uh, um, and uh, according to the chairman of the authority, he said to ensure that visitors to the Emirates from within and, uh, and outside the country have an enjoyable and unforgettable summer experience, we have taken all necessary precautions to protect the health and safety of those visiting Sharjah. Yeah, and the campaign is going to see the participation of 15 hotels here in the Emirate uh, to ensure the success of Sharjah Summer 2021. And what they're going to be doing is these well-known hotel chains is offer special packages and deals that are available only during the days of the campaign. So this is absolutely remarkable. A uh, great place to visit the Emirate of Sharjah, known for its one-of-a-kind tourist experience that reflects authentic Arab heritage, an emirate that is home to numerous tourism and cultural attractions and amazing family destinations as well. So much to do here in terms of outdoor activities and adventures along its uh, beautiful natural landmarks, beaches, deserts, and its thriving cultural and art scene. Not to men- not to forget about the food. The food is absolutely great as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely is. And uh, I have to be a bit biased over here. You've it, We're so used to waking up early as us as a Morning Majlis crew. Uh, I would ask everyone to start their days early. Yes. On Aydha, Aydha. There's so much to do and it's better yeah. to start early. Yeah. And just be out. Get it out of the way. Get it done. Go to the beaches, wherever you want to go because we are we're, we're, we are aware that wherever it's going to be a popular destination such as Khorfa Khan or even the Al Muntaza Beach in the Emirate of Sharjah uh, or the city of Sharjah it, it is going to get busy. Busy, exactly. Yeah, so so at this time it will be much better. It's yeah. better to get it done out of the way. Yeah. Be up and early and then you're done for the evening really mm-hmm. and then you can just relax so make the most of the picturesque beaches golden desert thriving cultural and a vibrant art scene we've had a few artists from the Maraya art center as well as the art foundation uh, uh, and shuruk's uh, destinations such as the um, uh, the 1971 design space who came over and joined us on the program to talk to us about their exhibitions so check their work out and uh, it's uh, for everyone so really. let's take a, a round of recommendations here uh, from the Majlis team mm. uh, let's take um, some recommendations for family places what is your fa- favorite family place so let's start with Abdul Karim I would say She's Park is great because uh, you know it gets busy mm. start early once again um, in the evenings if you try to set up camp you'll struggle to be honest it's mm-hmm. so busy yeah. there'll be a long yeah. queue so, so you start early. If, if you start early, that's a great place to go. Uh, uh, and then we have the Zabara Beach as well in the Emirate of Sharjah. Tr- definitely try mm-hmm. that. In Khorfa Khan, try that. So a new destination for you to check out. And um, apart from that, Kalba. Kalba, I've, I've got a very nice. Kalba Mangrove Center, guys. Pencil it in your diaries. Definitely check that out. What about you, Ahmed? Yeah, mine is uh, Majaz, Al Majaz Waterfront. Oh, it's just yeah. classic. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just yeah. a classic it's a destination. Winner. Uh, there's just so much to do there, uh, yeah. so many activities for families as well, uh, whether you're into uh, the jogging track or you want a, a great restaurant or cafe to go to or take your kids playing somewhere. It's just a little bit of everything uh, and all in one place. So for me, it's the classic Amajaz Waterfront. I would choose the El Muntaza Parks. Okay. I love El Muntaza Park. That's a great family place. The water rides at the Pearl Kingdom. It's just amazing. Um, and they have like the ladies only day as well. Mm-hmm. That's something that I, I love. And I appreciate the parks for doing that as well. And there's so much to do over there. Um, so, yeah, I love the El Muntaza Parks. Adventureland is nice as well. That is very good. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Sharjah Aquarium. Not a bad spot. Yeah. It's the place where you can just discover the mysteries of of marine life, basically, and uh, can find all the marine life species over there as well. Uh, But my personal favorite, I always say it, it's the rain room. Yes, it definitely is. It's a great spot. Especially now with this weather. Mm. You want some, like, water. Even though the water doesn't touch you. (laughs) It's just, uh, it does something to your mood. It's very calming, relaxing. There are people that literally play rain banging on window sound effects on their computer just to simulate simulate that feeling of being in your cozy uh, indoor bedroom with rain outside. It's nice. It's nice. It's a nice place to be. Yeah. 
For me, I would say if people were listening to us right now and said, uh, you know, we've done it all, whatever destination you've told us within the city, they want to get away Let's from... Let's get to of, some hidden gems. Then. Yeah, the hidden gems. I would definitely recommend checking out the new motorway that was launched, the Al-Watan Road. Uh, it does go around the Omani Roda area, and yes, it does connect to very, very popular destinations in Sharjah, such as Maliha Desert, uh, and it also leads you on to the mount through the mountainous terrain towards Kalba um, and and even Khorfakan. So you can take that route if you're feeling a bit more adventurous and do not want to take the very popular Khorfakan road, because guys, I'm I'm going to tell you different this from now. You are going to face traffic going on that route because so many people head on to Khorfakan. I'd like to claim mainly because they listen to Morning Match. Listen, this is why they all go down there. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure people are aware of the beauty of that part of the country anyway. Um, Al Watan Road, check it out. Another hidden gem, especially for shopping. Guess what? It's the Al Rahmania Mall. Oh. I feel like it's so undervisited or mm. it's not talked about as much. It's not given credit as much as it should be because it's really spectacular. It's a yeah. new mall. Um, and it, it definitely offers a wide selection of uh, cafe places, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. food outlets. Uh, it has a gymnasium, clinics, even um, mm. entertainment center, and, and a lot of facilities. I, I was there actually. Some, somehow ended up in Rahmani. It's it, like well, you'd think it'd be a little cozy neighborhood mall with the very basic of amenities, but for a mall, like a, a neighborhood mall, it's yeah. absolutely spectacular. You're right, and it's a sustainable mall. Oh, yes. Go. Sustainable mall. Because it is in a sustainable <laughs> city. Mm. Or close to it, yeah. And then you have the Kishesha Park also quite close by to it. So there's so much to... Uh, to celebrate and, yep. and, and relax. Uh, so uh, do stay with us in the morning, Majlis. Do drop us your text uh, and on 4215, your own recommendations to contribute towards the Majlis diaries of where you can travel to within the Emirate of Sharjah. One thing that we can be traveling to is the world of sports headlines, courtesy of Iman Al Majali. We shall return on the Majlis right after that. Stay tuned to the morning Majlis on Pulse 95. Pulse 95. Between local lines, notes from the Emirate. The Sharjah Broadcasting Authority has launched Watar. It's a specialized radio channel that operates around the clock and broadcasts a wonderful selection of Arabic oldies sung by some of the most famous artists here in the region throughout its history, in addition to a selection of some beautiful songs from the Gulf region as well. So we're going to have a package of timeless masterpieces on Watar featuring some of the most important singers um, such as Talal Madda, Muhammad Abdo, Abu Bakr Salem, and other stars as well. And the frequency is 96.1. Write that down. Mm -hmm. Rania, I take it you're a huge fan of yes, this. Yes, I am, because it's <laughs> totally my taste. Uh, this, uh, I, I'm a keen listener of uh, Watar ever since it actually uh, opened, it was, which, was, which was recent, I believe. It was like... Uh, yeah couple of months ago or was it last month I believe it was last month but I started listening to it uh, last month and I'm just hooked on it like I come uh, I when I go back home on the way back after we're done because there are no programs um, after our program until like uh, two so I tune into Watar to be honest and at this time as we speak, I believe uh, Fairuz is going to be playing because oh. that's like the ultimate, you know, morning fix is Fairuz. You got to listen to Fairuz in the morning. Uh, but yeah, afterwards, after our show, actually, when I tune into Watar, you will listen to Talal Maddah, you will uh, listen to uh, Abu Bakr Salim. Um, um, you, Kathum, too. Um, Kathum, um Kathum is more of a night kind of a vibe right you yeah. listen to her in the night like it's that's um Kalthum. that's the vibe right there yep yep that's um Kalthum. and uh, also uh, muhammad abdul wahab for sure um farid al atrash uh, abdul halim hafiz all those singers you listen to them and not only that you would listen to turn it down a bit i like it <laughs> yeah i love it though um you would actually listen to uh, it's, it's it's really it goes really classic and it also goes a little bit classic you know yeah like you can go as far as 30 40 years back or you can go as recent as 10 years back that kind of classic so it has a good mixture 
of Arabic and Gulf songs. It's not just Arabic. And uh, yeah, and the, what I love about Watar as well is that they have the storytelling mm-hmm. uh, segments. So you will hear a, the story behind every single famous song that we don't you we probably love listening to like for example like al amakin yes. by uh, by uh, muhammad abdu uh, you don't know the story behind it but like there's this, uh, the the girl yeah, one of the um, presenters or the voiceovers uh, at mm. um, uh, watar uh, station she will come before playing the song or after playing the song uh, of for example al amakin or any any famous song she would tell you the story behind it the behind the scenes wow. how was it developed what was the story behind it so uh, it's very interesting to to see the stories behind all the famous songs that were hooked on since childhood so yeah i love it so the frequency is 96.1 96.1 uh, you can switch it on when the morning majlis is done right after 10 o'clock so, for the so time. do you know what pulse means in Arabic obviously a nubbub nubbub yes. so do you have an, a clue what water means in Arabic because no. water is an, is an Arabic uh, a word I th- but do you know what it actually is translates it in, what it translates into in English I have a feeling it might be something to do with a bit of rhythm or something. Chord. Note. Oh. Yeah, it could be chord. Could be cool. um, strings. Uh, string. Exactly, oh. yeah. Chord, string. Nice. Yeah. Well, let's uh, uh, give you a little bit of a teaser in terms of what you can expect from uh, this new station. That is a great teaser. But that's more of a night thing. It's a very night thing. And they have sure. covers as well of some more recent songs. Oh. So you'll find a very good mix of Arabic and uh, Khaliji songs. It's just a vibe. It's relaxing. Yes, very. So let's play this again. <laughs> very nice. SBA's new baby. Soothing. 96 <laughs> points one indeed. Um, the thing is, you know, there's always a stigma, for example, um, you know, coming from an Asian descent, uh, uh, myself, South mm-hmm. Asian ethnicity, uh, let's say the Pakistani or the Indian vibes as well. If you play old songs, mm. there's two reactions to it. First, they'll think, oh, you've got an interesting taste. Others would be like, oh, my days, look at you, grandpa. Uh, do you get that with Arabic music, or is it more appreciated? Do you reckon if you listen to it's, such? It's a celebration of heritage. Okay. That is exactly what it is. Uh, some songs, for example, when I listen to on, on Watar, I'm like, wow, how did they pull this out? Who who's yeah, behind yeah. this? Yeah. Literally, like. Uh, well, I'm fortunate enough to know who's behind this. But for people, like if, as a listener, my for example, of my my family members, my my mother, she's um, she's almost 70 years old. And I okay. one day she actually when she was here uh, last month, she actually listened to uh, to Watar. Okay. And she doesn't know this is uh, f- you know part of uh, Sharjah Broadcasting Authority. So she's just like, I like this. Uh, the station keep it i love the songs mm. and she's 70 right and my sister she's just a little bit older than me and she's also hooked on it so mm. all age groups they're actually they can find something that they like in in that station. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and they associate to and they have memories with every oh, song yeah yeah to add to that as well i mean uh, i don't think you get made fun of if you like say you're with your your friends and you're a young person and you say that you're into this type of music a lot of times younger people haven't even heard this music to begin with and there's always that moment and i've had that moment too when you listen to it for the first time and it resonates with you in a way that that classical Arab music mm. and you're like whoa this is really good I kind of like this and you tell people about it and I don't think I've faced I've been stigmatized for it mm. either so I think it's just something that does something for anybody who listens to it like that exactly. first moment you play a classical Arab song and your eyes go wide and you're like whoa I can jam to this yes I like this and you start playing it over and over again so it's just music for everybody, and it uh, doesn't matter how old you are. I don't think people make fun of you for it, so God bless. <laughs> keep oh, going. Keep going, indeed. So 96.1, classical uh, form of Arabic music for you to tune into. Um, Tarab. Yes. That's what it is. What's it called again? Sorry? Tarab music. Like, Tarab um, music, okay. Classical, classical vibe. vibe ah, of music. Okay. It's uh, so, so, Tarab Asil, that's what so we say. For, uh, for us, we call it a ghazal, this really, really old school kind of like... Um, 
thought-provoking, old-school, kind of expressing regret or being upset over a certain thing, overthinking a scenario kind of a situation. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's good music as well. Of course, uh, I think as you guys rightly pointed out, it just brings back memories for people and this is one of the reasons why they listen to... Nostalgia. That's uh, yeah, what it is. Yeah, a bit of, nost- bit of taste That's of what what it is. It's yeah. a celebration of heritage uh, and your history and your memories. It's all about nostalgia. Exactly. Yeah. Well, stay with us on the Morning Match List. We have a bit of new music. Harry Styles up next to take on the radio airwaves here on Pulse 95 Radio and then we shall return right after that continuing the discussions and up next we talk to you uh, about the uh, development of education here in the Emirate of Sharjah. Stay tuned, you're listening to the Morning Majlis only on Pulse 95. Join the conversation with the Morning Majlis Pulse 95. Well, we got some business uh, developments and headlines. When especially when we're talking about a big app, shares in food delivery app Zomato, which is one of India's biggest tech startups that launched its initial public offering uh, actually yesterday, was subscribed more than 1.05 times at the end of the first day. A million. Or a billion, was it? A I billion. Believe. Yeah. Uh, according to the data available with the Bombay Stock Exchange. Now, the shares, which are to be allocated to qualified institutional buyers and non-institutional investors, they were subscribed 98% and 13% respectively. Shares of retail individual investors were subscribed 2.69 times. And that is according to the data. Now, in the employees segment, shares were subscribed around 18%. Amid analysts' growing concern over the high valuation of the loss-making co- company, which is backed by Chinese billionaire Jack Ma's Ant Group. Now, Zamata's three-day offering, which ends on Friday, and uh, with shares priced between uh, 72 to 76 rupees per share, is expected to take the company's valuation to a whopping $9 billion. Yeah, this is uh, interesting to see. Yeah, especially uh, a big deal because of uh, India's thriving tech sector. We've seen a number of startups and unicorns uh, over the recent years. And it's also interesting as well because uh, we've seen a boon in food delivery companies during COVID-19. More and more people turning to that option now. And it's almost as if uh, going on Zomato or a similar app is like the default in terms of the way that you order food, uh, long gone are the days where you have to call up a restaurant <laughs> to de- settle your order. Yeah. Now you're expected to not just use an app, but also track the driver on the way uh, and, and such. So uh, that's pretty interesting. But the other interesting thing, too, is this isn't the first uh, food delivery IPO we had spoken about recently. There was the Deliveroo thing as well. It did not work out. Um, yeah, the Deliveroo IPO back in the days when they did go uh, go public, it, they they expected the valuation to be a lot higher, but then obviously it, it didn't. But uh, uh, that that was something that uh, really took the headlines and the world's attention by storm. Uh, but this one, Zomato, given how popular it is here in the United Arab Emirates and also popular amongst the Indian demographic, it is interesting to see how things will react. But to be honest, as 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 a, as a normal self-proclaimed analyst, uh, uh, I just don't see food delivery apps being a an interesting or an appealing venture to invest into. Why so? You use it, but you don't see them. They don't make anything. They, they're a service provider. You would right? think they don't make anything, but they do. No, 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 in terms of money, but like product-wise, they don't. Oh, yeah, product-wise, yeah, okay. they, don't, they don't cook themselves. They yeah. don't do anything themselves. They're they're a service provider. Yes, they come up with the ghost kitchen concepts. That's another way of making money, but. I, but they make a lot of money the through user the base. delivery part, obviously. I think the, the the biggest asset they have is the database of clients. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I remember. Yesterday, I ordered something from uh, one of those apps. You know, mm. food delivery apps, yeah. and um, you know, I, I ordered like stuff that were worth maybe like the whole b- bill would be worth maybe like sixty dirhams, and then you know later on uh, the the subtotal was uh, like ninety seven dirhams. I'm like, what did I order? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like seven for going from seventy something or sixty something to ninety. How do you do that? 
because of the uh, the 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 delivery fees. There they, we go. They, the they, delivery they, fees. Yeah. They they overcharge it. See, this is it's why I did. This is what I do normally. I, I do the complete opposite to you. I literally call the restaurant directly and say, I make Deliver- my order, I'll come pick it up. <laughs> oh, okay. So I defeat the Direct. entire purpose <laughs> of this business yeah. model. <laughs> yeah. I pick it up myself. Yeah, yeah. And this is just standard. It's because I kind of know exactly what I, I feel like eating. I'll call the restaurant up and say, yeah. make it. I'm driving up to you guys and going to pick it up. Because to be honest, like it, despite the delivery fee, the food gets... Uh, one of the reasons why I'm not a massive fan of food delivery is because the food is prepared and then by the time the driver picks it's it up, it comes It's not as hot. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why. But apart from that, just a great idea, of course, yeah. that there's, yes. there's this new services and, mm. and supporting local businesses to be given that platform uh, on a... Uh, uh, on an app where people can have access to it is great. Right, sure. yeah. And they, they, they tend to promote uh, a lot of restaurants too. Yeah. I think that's uh, one, one uh, another way they, they, they tend to make money. They commission advertising from local restaurants as well. I've noticed that uh, they got their own fleet of uh, delivery drivers stationed everywhere. Uh, It's been really fast deliveries, uh, in fact, lately as well, especially uh, not just at uh, Zomato, there's Deliveroo as well. And uh, yeah, it's it's interesting to see that. I, I like that you have this fresh perspective on it that you don't d- d- order delivery as much as most people do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's just he doesn't give in easily. Doesn't give in easily. Uh, <laughs> still old school. <laughs> and to stay old school, we have the business headlines yes. courtesy of Iman Majali, and then we'll quickly move on with the discussions with the musical entertainment on offer here on Pulse ninety five. Stay with us. This is the Morning Majlis, only on Pulse ninety five. If you liked this episode of The Morning Majlis, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Bubbles.